So this is my exhaust section for the car. And this is going back to approximately where the handbrake cables exit out of the car. And the reason I've done uh, finished up there is it gives me loads of clearance for this uh, VEAT band type arrangement. So a nice handy way of uh, putting the exhaust together and taking it apart again. Uh, by leaving a couple of mil of material uh, here, you seem to focus, a constant issue. Um, by leaving a little bit of material sticking out here, what it does do is gives you nice rotation when you put the mating ring on, so it sits on like that. So that everything is nice and centre. You just got to remember that the next pipe that gets welded on has to be left shy of the front of the V-band. But you never weld the front of these anyway. They're not, not really meant to be designed for that, unless you're into TIG welding and just puddling it in and uh, linishing it off afterwards, because these two, this surface and this surface have to be flat. So that's nice and flat there now. You can, there's a nice view of it. Uh, the reason leaving the pipe sticking out a little bit is kind of obvious as it seems there is when these guys go together, even though they're V-banded, uh, they can actually end up kind of sitting kind of like this. If you can see, they can end up doing this type of thing when they're fitted together and still be tight and still seal. So I suppose it's not going to kill the engine or anything, but I guess I just leave a little bit of metal here. just prevents that happening. So on my exhaust then I have a little straight section here. This was a 90 degree bend, just cut. This part is just reversed around. So that is part of the 90 degree bend if you catch me. And the 90 degree bend goes all the way up here. I've got a little lug mid up here, just a piece of metal bent around. A uh, fellow welded in on the back. Little stump, a couple of little knobs of weld on the ends here. Just to kind of beef up the diameter. A little bit doesn't take much. And the exhaust rubber that I have there is just a nice push on over this guy. And that goes back up into the center of the car. Uh, in where the gear shifter is. Um, I made a slightly different bracket there that I bolted up in under the car as well, but um, I suppose I'm not really going to take a picture of that right now or anything. It's not special. It's kind of bolted up to where there is an exhaust hanger in the car anyway. Uh, so you could make that match if you tried a bit harder. Uh, I've also bent in this guy here and welded him in, and he is at a little captive nut there, and he's for the heat shield. So there's the, the Mark V or the Mark IV heat shields. He just bolts on there through the captive nuts and back up here to the original ones there. So that if I ever park in a field, uh, maybe at a show or something, maybe we're going to and this is really hot and the grass is dry, uh, hopefully prevent the car from burning. So that would be nice. So this is the reducer section I made. You can see all the little bends on it. It's not a work of art or anything, but it brings it down from the cast down to the 50 millimeter tube. Nice and slow. And I guess I made that up because... I couldn't be bothered searching the net for a reducer from that size to the next. Um, Neil did mention that you can take the cat out and map it out of the ECU. Um, but unfortunately, I suppose for me and lack of knowledge, I already had uh, the ECU remapped and didn't get the uh, second O2 sensor, the one after the cat, uh, removed. So under here now is where I've got this guy welded back in. So here's my bunk for my... Uh, my map sensor, and it's pointing the same direction as the one would have been in the car, the Mark, the Mark, uh, the Mark IV exhaust. So he's just the same one, just his whole solid out, just welded back in. Not special there, really. So I'm back up to this section up here, then flexi joints, and the last bit of the exhaust I showed. This is the, this is where I had ended. Uh, it was a little bit longer than here, but I cut it off and I put in a bit of a bend there that I had to kind of make a slight stagger on it. And if you remember, that was kind of to make this part of the exhaust avoid uh, the gear shift mechanism, which it does nicely now. And this part then, which goes in and out like that, brings this part of the exhaust back into the center of the car. So I think I'm good to go now. And uh, next thing I'm going to do now is fit this for that and forget about it, hopefully. I'm at the point where I need to start some of the wiring for the car. I have the loom from the engine going into the bulkhead, into the grommet, and now I need to uh, power up the injectors and the coils and uh, take some connections back in for like the eye light and things like that. Um, so uh, when I took the 
Mark IV car apart and pulled out the engine. I pulled out the, pretty much the entire loom as well there. You can see it kind of spread down along there, along, along the roof of the garage here. So there's a lot of this which is just going to be uh, going for the recycle centre. Um, but of course there's a bit of it that's going to be needed as well. So when I took it off, uh, I label up everything. So here's my uh, alternator wire, starter wire. won't be using this of this loom. Uh, I will use this plug, but uh, the wires themselves will be fished back into the loom to work in with some of the um, original loom in the car. So uh, not sure how, exactly how much of all this I'm going to use yet. This is the, uh, the airflow meter. This is uh, power for, because into the main loom, it's a, it's a two pin socket, but only one actually used. See the connection just there. Anyway, uh, we'll go back to the ECU plug. I'll follow it on down along here, this part of the loom, and it trails down to um, the lambda sensors or the oxygen sensors, uh, pre and post cat here. There's a bunch of wiring there. So that, that is all part of the same string along here, and it goes through the Mark IV inside the instruction box. So what I'm going to do is just uh, unplug all these guys for now and take this bit of it with me uh, for the time being and start on doing all the tape and figuring out which bits I need to keep and which bits I, do, I don't. Um, I might keep the, the relay box here, yes. Again, I'm not 100% sure exactly what I'm going to do and it's going to kind of play it by ear. There is a huge amount of this that can be just all trashed and got rid of. Uh, but of course, the, the loom itself is a really handy source for um, just simply even the, the, the sockets. Just if you want to plug some more stuff into the car or anything like that, um, the plugs themselves are really handy things to have. So they're worth hanging on to, I think, for a while. So I'll march on and get this fella separated and take out this part of the loom, which would be the, like I say, ECU to air mass meter, stuff like that. Uh, so I'll take a quick clip of the wiring, um, as I suppose it's part of the job that most people fear. Uh, I wouldn't be a, the biggest fan of this myself, where to be able to do it, uh, it does take a little bit of time. So what I'm looking at here is the alternator, and what I've done basically is stripped out the Mark IV loom, and I'm using as much of it as possible. So here I have the uh, alternator plug, and the wires from it, and you've, I think it's brown and red inside here, and a blue, they're together inside in the socket anyway. Um, one goes to the little light on the dash, which is the blue one I believe, and the brown uh, red one then goes back into the ECU and that monitors uh, torque in the alternator I believe or power output or something to that effect. Uh, what I've done in here then as well is inside here you can just see beside the dipstick tube there is another plug and that is one of the vacuum guys up here for uh, like uh, taking the boost out of the engine and stuff like that. So that I have the two of those guys going into the one piece of uh, conduit there and there's a little bracket ready mounted there for it. You can see a plastic guy there that is uh, this guy here. He's already inside the car so I'm rooting back the wiring back the way it came back out. So I'm just going to jump to the other side of the car now. And I'm back over here at the gearbox and this is uh, the cables here I was talking about a minute ago. The two of these I have inside in these conduits so there's four wires inside in this now, four very light wires and they are running back into the loom and that's these guys, that's this guy's set here. So the four little wires there going out. And so this is also part of the Mark IV setup. Uh, this is the main engine loom. So this is the one with the 14 pin plug on it. And it also would have a two pin plug with one wire in it. And that would be purple and black. And what I've done is I'm putting this in with the grommet here. I'm gonna put some more tape over that. And I'm going to connect that inside in the car. So that will make this piece of uh, cable in or wiring loom uh, nice and tidy. And I have the plug for this, of course, with the corresponding pins and wires, which will join this part of the loom. And they're going to go back into the car inside through that grommet. So what will be coming out here as well is uh, there'll be the main wire from the alternator, that's the heavy cable. Uh, it'll be joined onto the starter. And from the starter then, if I, if I route my battery in the boost, it'll go back into the boost via a junction box inside, maybe under the glove box. And if I put the battery tray back out here, which I may or may not do, I don't think I will, uh, it obviously will come back up to the plus here. Uh, other wires here are the starter one. And we have the reverse switch down here as well. So I put those into conduits. And you can see I'm going to kind of clip these guys together here 
and I'm going to take this loom back out once I'm done and I'm going to tape, wrap all this guy back up. There's also a nerf out here in this loom. I'm going to earth it to the car or to the battery. I think I'll be leaning towards putting the battery in the boot but uh, see if I go ahead with that or not. Uh, the wires that are in that loom from standard are uh, stuff like the headlights here, uh, the horn uh, and the radiator fan. I'm going to let the standard Mark 1 um, switch uh, run the fan. I'll probably get a slimline fan all right to kind of make it a bit tidier looking. And uh, uh, that's that part of the wiring. Uh, there is, this is the air mass meter, of course. It's got a plug. It's got a plug here. So we've got to run some wires out for that. I'll show you those guys in a second. And they are going to tie into this open loom at the minute. And I'm going to run another piece of this uh, conduit, conduit type stuff from here back into this loom here. So that I can... The idea being that if I ever had to pull the engine out, I could unplug everything using the factory plugs. And the whole lot will be just nice and simple and neat and quick to connect back up again. So this part of the loom that I have hanging here, this is all stuff that is no longer needed. Uh, this is for like the air pump and we've got some other stuff here. I got them labelled up as I took them out. Um, there's some excellent guides for wiring anyway. Um, so this is power steering pressure and stuff like that. You also have inside this loom as well is the starter motor and you have the reverse switch wiring which of course you don't need in this loom, you use the Mark 1 loom for there. Um, so that's just some of the crap you can chop off and get rid of. And this guy here then is the second plug uh, for the ECU. So uh, some of these wires you're going to have to cut and rejoin, uh, so I'm finding anyway. So I have one going to the vacuum switch that's at the front of the engine, that's near the alternator. Uh, that's that guy here, he has to join back up again. Uh, there's also a wire in here for um, the alternator. Um, this, these wires here are for the air mass meter. Uh, you can often tell these guys by this type of thing anyway, where you get the, the, the winding of it. So I've depinned that from their plug. Um, you get these depinning tools online, they're nice and cheap, well worth, it, well worth the money to, uh, to get the pins out. And I've depinned this because this guy is going to come out through my grommet, through the bulkhead, and these guys are going up to the air mass meter. And the rest of this loom then, this spaghetti of wires here, and uh, they are going to remain inside in the car. So some of these wires are going to be powered up like this um, blue and yellow guys here. Uh, there are some excellent guides online um, of the Club GTI guys on what to do with these plugs here. So they refer to them by the color of them. Um, they call them like black 10 pin, white 10 pin, blue 10 pin, uh, stuff like that, and orange. Now you see like this orange guy here, uh, he usually ends up with one wire hanging out of him. Uh, this guy here has uh, the green one, you see you now. We have four wires hanging on that. Uh, we've got some extra wires hanging on there, we see, and what these guys are for. Again, they've only got two wires there. So what I've done is I have labeled these guys up as my alternator one. That's the little small brown wire and the white guy here. So what I've done is I've gone through the wiring diagram and gone through the Club GTI guide and figured out what all these guys are for. Some of them are really, really obvious. Uh, this one is the throttle pedal wiring. So here is the throttle pedal plug. And he is in his own little harness, and he is back into this blue guy here. So that just literally plugs straight in, and that is that wiring finished. So you're going to have to mount this guy somewhere where that loom reaches the throttle pedal. So you've got plenty of length there, uh, so there shouldn't be any problems there. Um, uh, this guy here is the brake pedal. So the brake pedal wiring has to go back to the loom as well. Uh, there's two wires in that. They go back into the loom and they're in the black plug and they're the only two to go back. And what that does from my reading on the internet is uh, when you're pressing the brakes and pressing the clutch, uh, you also have the clutch pedal wiring here by the way, i just uh, mention that there. I've got them around here somewhere. So this is the clutch pedal wiring. It's a blue plug. There's only two wires in it. And they go back. One of them has to be live, so the there's a, a blue, so there's a blue black wire here on the clutch pedal that has to be live, has supplied juice with the ignition on, and the other wire then heads back into this plug here. You only have one wire from the clutch pedal, this because the that is actually grounding the current into the ECU, and, uh, and the other one just says 
for reference, it's the, um, it's the, uh, this is the alternator. It's called DFM, so it's some kind of frequency measurement. Uh, so, I mean, you could go to the bother on the other side of the white plug of depinning all these guys and getting rid of them, but I think they're safe inside here, so I don't think there's any reason to take them back out again. Uh, some of the other wires, then, this is the brown plug. This is the, the, one of the main plugs for powering up your ECU, and I believe this one keeps the constant 12 volts in as well. I, I I'll double check a lot of that stuff, but uh, I'll try and make up a little bit of a diagram later on as I go. Uh, of course, my engine isn't running yet, so I've got a bit of work to do to prove out all this stuff. But uh, this is probably one of the messier parts of the wiring of the car, is this spaghetti of wiring here. Of course, this is pulled out of the loom. Uh, there is a crap load of other wire that get left behind, and there's no real point showing that, I suppose. But basically, get your ECU plug, follow out all the wiring out along, You'll get up as far as these plugs, keep them all, don't go butchering them. Uh, and these wires then down here as well are for basically for the main relay. Um, these are main relay wires, so the ECU switches those on. That powers up things like the coils. So that is the purple black wire that goes in through the bulkhead that I showed. Uh, did that didn't have taped up there a while ago. Um, so there's a bit to figure out here, I guess. So I better get cracking and fit this fellow up. And I have the 14 pin connector here, and i just been messing around with the run of the wiring and all that. So I was having a look. So I don't like the idea of this guy here being floppy and kind of hanging around and maybe good cable tied up, I guess. But I don't know if it's going to be particularly good. This 14 pin plug here does have a feature in it for holding onto it. So you've got these grooves, this groove here. So I'm going to make up a little metal bracket that this guy slots into and perhaps maybe mount them uh, in here somewhere, maybe like this, or maybe maybe this way, so that this guy slides down into the bracket. And I cut out and bent up a piece of metal here to make myself up a little bracket. So this 14-pin plug has a little feature here for sliding on a piece of metal. So I just made it so it's slightly bent, so it kind of is tight on it, if you know what I mean. So what I'm going to do with this guy here is, there was a hole in the chassis right here, I put a nut rivet in, a little length 6 bolt here, and this guy is just going to bolt in there like that. So I have a sharp run then for my wiring, from the pin up to the grommet, and have ample wire inside in the car to, to play with. So I've got my little bracket bolted up here, this guy here, and got the 14 pin connector plugged into it. And I've got the wiring uh, ran into the loom there, into the grommet. I don't think I'm going to fit much more into this guy here. Uh, but I think I'm at the stage now where I have all the wiring in for the engine bay. And uh, so it's time to start connecting things up on the inside.